welcome to the Listening Time Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Connor and you're listening to episode 104 of the Listening Time Podcast. I hope you're all doing great and I hope that your English learning journey is going well. I hope that this podcast has been a very useful resource for you. And remember that if this podcast has become a little bit easy for you, then it's time for you to try out my advanced podcast. If you're interested in that, you can become a Listening Time family member and you'll receive two new advanced podcast episodes every month. In those episodes, I speak at normal speed. I speak fast like native speakers normally speak. And of course, you have the transcript, so this will help you get used to fast English and it will help your ears become accustomed to what uh, English really sounds like when you go out and actually talk to English speakers in different situations. So that will be a helpful resource for you if you want to reach a more advanced level of listening. And as I mentioned in the last episode, if you're a Spanish speaker and you're interested in reading fiction in English, then you can try out my book, which I wrote. Uh, It's a collection of three short mystery stories uh, written in English and translated into Spanish. So, of course, if that's something that's interesting for you, then uh, you can uh, buy that and use that as an introduction into the world of reading in English. So the link to that is in the episode description as well. So when I was recording the last episode about reading in English, it made me also want to talk a little bit about writing. I've always liked writing, and it's always been something interesting for me. So that last episode made me want to talk about this topic in today's episode. So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about writing and uh, writing in different types of contexts, uh, different things that people write. So I hope that this episode will be interesting for you. And of course, you have the transcript available in the episode description below the episode. So click on that if you need it. And if you like this podcast, please share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. And please give it a five-star rating and write a review. All right, let's get started. Are your ears ready? You know what time it is. It's listening time. Okay, let's talk about writing. So the first type of writing I want to talk about is writing essays. So in the U.S., we have to write a lot of essays in school. I think that we start writing essays at a pretty young age. I remember writing very basic essays when I was in elementary school. By the way, the term elementary school in the U.S. refers to the first level of school. So from first grade to sixth grade usually is elementary school. So I remember doing a little bit of writing during my elementary school years, and I think we started writing a few essays during that time to learn the structure of how to write an essay. Because in the U.S., we have a very particular uh, format of how to write an essay. It's like a structure or a formula that you're supposed to follow. So if you're a good writer and you write very good and interesting sentences, but you don't know the formula of how to write an essay in the U.S., then unfortunately you still won't get a perfect score even if you're a good writer because you have to follow this formula. So that's something that we need to learn in school. We need to learn what each paragraph is supposed to contain, how we're supposed to structure our different ideas 
within the essay. We have to learn how to do all that. So we learn that in school, and I think we start to do more essay writing in middle school and high school, especially in high school. That's where we do、uh, more essay writing. We have to read different books in our English class, and then write about those books,、uh, write different essays、uh, about the books that we read, and then. I also studied English in college. My major was English. Remember that in English, the word major refers to the subject that you study in college. Okay, so my major was English, and because of that, I did a lot of essay writing in college. I had to write—I don't know how many essays, but I wrote quite a few. And so that was something that、uh, I already had to know how to do very well, because if I hadn't known how to do that, it would have been very hard for me to get good grades in college, because I had to write a lot of essays. So most people don't like writing essays. However, for me, it was always fairly easy, because, like I said. We have like a formula of how to write essays, and I always felt that it was pretty easy to follow this formula. So for me, that was never a big deal. But most other people struggled with essay writing when they were in school. So I remember friends of mine, other classmates, that hated writing essays because for them, it seemed really hard. And for me, I never understood why it was that hard,、uh, because it was just following the formula. You don't have to be super creative to get good grades on your essays in the U.S. You just have to write it the correct way. So that was never too hard for me. And I actually worked as an essay tutor for about a year or a little less when I was in college. So I actually helped foreigners who were living in the U.S. and who were taking ESL classes in college. ESL stands for English as a Second Language.、Um, they were taking these classes and they had to write a lot of essays. So I had to help them with their essays and help them structure these essays. So as I already mentioned, native English speakers struggle a lot with essay writing in school. So you can imagine that、uh, people that don't speak English、uh, as their first language, they struggle even more. So that was something that I had to help them with and help them get good grades on their essays. All right, now let's talk about creative writing. So when I was younger. I did some creative writing as a kid, and even older when I was an adult, even when I was in college. But I remember when I was pretty young, maybe nine, ten years old, something like that. I remember writing different superhero stories. My friend and I wanted to write different stories、uh, with different superheroes that we invented. And I remember having so much fun with that and writing those stories. I don't have those stories anymore. I wish I did. It would be really、uh, funny to look back and see what type of writing I did as a kid. But unfortunately, I don't have those stories anymore. But I have memories of writing those stories and having a lot of fun、uh, writing. And so that was something I enjoyed as a kid, and as an adult,、uh, I also liked creative writing, and I always tried to start writing a book, and I tried this like maybe three or four times, and I never finished writing、uh, any of these books, unfortunately,、um, but I always got through a few chapters, maybe. I think the most that I ever wrote was maybe one quarter of a book or one third of a book. 
but I never finished them. I was never that satisfied with what I was writing. So maybe someday uh, I'll be able to finish writing that fiction book that uh, I always dreamed of writing when I was younger. However, as you know, I did just publish a collection of short stories, but of course this book has a different purpose uh, than the books that I tried to write before. So this book is fiction, of course. Uh, it's a collection of three short stories. However, the goal with that book was to help uh, Spanish speakers who want to read in English. So it's not exactly the book I would write if I were just writing for English speakers, for example. So it's not the same thing as what I was trying to do uh, earlier on in my adulthood. And I think that later on in life, I uh, might try to uh, achieve that goal that I never achieved before and write a novel for English speakers. So we'll see. Hopefully I do it at some point. And uh, next I want to talk about writing letters. If you're really young, you might not have any experience with writing letters uh, because it's not something that a lot of people do nowadays. But when I was young, it was still something that people did. I wrote a few letters to different friends that lived in different cities. I remember doing this a little bit when I was younger, but this kind of died out as I got older. In English, when we say that something dies out, we're saying that it disappears, it goes away. So that practice died out as I got older, and nowadays I don't think it's that common to write a letter by hand and mail it to someone. Uh, in English, when we say that you do something by hand, we just mean that you do it with your hand manually, right? You don't type it on the computer or whatever. So nowadays you rarely see people writing letters by hand. But I think it's pretty cool uh, that people used to do this. It feels very personal and intimate to uh, have a pencil in your hand and write a letter to someone. I always liked that feeling. Uh, I enjoyed writing those letters when I was younger. However, nowadays, I don't think I have any reason to do that anymore. Um, now you can still write letters on the computer but we usually just consider those to be emails, uh, which brings me to the next category of writing, which is email writing. I think that this type of writing is something that we all need to work on and get better at because it's an essential skill. We all need to write emails. It's something that we all have to do, uh, some of us more than others. Um, but many people have to do this all the time because of their job. And even if you don't have a job that requires you to write many emails, it's still necessary to write emails uh, for other reasons, right? You might be writing an email uh, regarding some process that you're going through with the government or you might be contacting some company or whatever it may be, this is something that all of us should try to get better at. Because if you don't know how to write an email properly, uh, the other person might get a bad impression of you. So in English, when we say that someone gets a bad impression of someone, we're saying that they have a bad feeling or bad image about someone else based on what the other person did. So we don't want the other person to have a bad impression of us. So it's important to learn how to properly write an email, 
uh, how to uh, format it and how to spell correctly and make sure to proofread the email for any mistakes and uh, make sure that we're doing things correctly. By the way, to proofread something means to read something again to try to detect any errors and correct those errors. So when we write emails or anything else, it's a good practice to proofread and make sure that you didn't uh, write anything incorrectly. So I think email writing is very important for all of us. Next, let's talk about writing texts. So texts are maybe the most common type of writing nowadays. And when I say the word text, I'm including um, messages that we send in messaging apps, uh, through normal SMS, text messages, iMessages, anything from our phone where we're um, sending messages to other phones in that way. So in general, we tend to use the word text when we talk about that type of message. So texting is the most common type of writing that many people do nowadays. I'm sure a lot of you would agree with that, that you write more texts than you do other things because a lot of us are in constant communication with our friends and family members and people are always writing us messages and we're responding to them. And texts are different from these other categories of writing because texts are very informal compared to other uh, types of writing. Of course, sometimes you have to send a more formal style of text message, but for the most part, texts tend to be less formal. So you can add more of your personality, more of your own style, and you can abbreviate words and things like that. In English, when we say that you abbreviate something, that means that you take a word and you make it shorter. Okay, so we do that all the time when we write text messages. And so this is the type of writing that doesn't really require any uh, structure. You can do it however you want. And so there's really no right or wrong way to text. You just text however you want. But I'm sure some of you have preferences about what type of texts you like to receive. Uh, some people might think that other people's texts look ugly because of the way that they abbreviate words or spell words wrong or whatever. You know, sometimes we can still get a bad impression of someone based on how they send text messages. So that might still be something important, but it's not nearly as important as emails usually. And another type of writing is journal writing. This is something that I haven't really done. I'll admit to that, but I think I'd like to do this in the future. It's something that seems to be beneficial in my opinion. I think it sounds interesting to do this. I'd like to collect my thoughts and put them down on a piece of paper and be able to kind of articulate the things I'm thinking or just write about what I did that day, how I felt, what I learned, etc. And I think that this is a good way to remember things from the past. So if I write a journal entry today and then uh, I forget everything that I did today, and then a year later, I read this journal entry, it can spark my memory and I can remember the things that I did. In English, when we say that something sparks your memory, we're saying that something causes you to remember something from the past. So this is a way 
that we can spark our memory and remember something that we did before. And I'm sure some of you keep journals and you write different things in them. And I'm sure you see different benefits to this. And I think I mentioned in one of my earliest episodes that it would be interesting for me uh, to also keep a dream journal. Some people have a journal where they write down what they dreamed the night before, because we tend to forget our dreams very quickly after we wake up. I'm sure this has happened to you before, where you dream something, it's really vivid and interesting, and then after a few hours after you wake up, you can't even remember what you dreamed. So that's something that uh, we can prevent if we keep a dream journal. And it might be interesting to go back and look at our different dreams that we had. I don't know if there are a lot of benefits to that, but for me, I find the idea kind of interesting. So that's why I uh, mentioned that. And one other type of writing I wanted to bring up is writing in a foreign language. By the way, the phrasal verb bring up in English just means mention. So I wanted to bring this up because this is a language podcast, and I'm sure some of you would like to uh, get better at writing in English. Writing and speaking are two completely different skills, right? So just because you speak English well, doesn't mean you can write well, unfortunately. And so this is a separate skill that we have to train. And I can see this in my own language learning, that uh, when I speak a language comfortably, that doesn't mean that I can write well. And it's a little frustrating uh, because I don't really know how to spell uh, certain words, or I don't know uh, how to uh, maybe punctuate uh, correctly in that language because maybe the punctuation is different uh, from the punctuation in English. So I've felt that frustration of not being able to write super well in foreign languages, uh, but I think it's something we can get better at if we read in foreign languages. I think that's one of the best ways to do this. And I talked about this in the last episode, uh, how reading in English will definitely help your writing skills. Uh, it won't magically make you uh, an amazing writer, but it will help you see uh, how sentences are properly structured, punctuated, and how words are spelled in English. It just helps your overall knowledge of the written language. So that's one of the best reasons to read in English or in any other language that you're learning. All right, why don't we stop there for today? Uh, speaking of reading in English, if you're interested in my book and you're a Spanish speaker who wants to read in English, then make sure to click on the link to the Amazon page that's in the episode description and it will take you to the product page on Amazon and you can buy that ebook if you're interested in that. And if you want my advanced episodes, remember to become a Listening Time family member so that you can receive two new advanced episodes every month in which I speak at normal speed. So that's what you need if you want to become an advanced listener. And if you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating and write a review and share it with anyone else you know who's learning English. All right, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'll talk to you on the next episode of Listening Time. <laughs>